mean, this is obviously Iana Visual directing de uh, film directing debut. Uh, it must be so exciting to finally be presenting this film to the, the big bad world. It's uh, yeah, the big bad world indeed. Um, it is. It's a long time, long time in the making, um, and and it feels like the right. It feels like. I mean, the the film has travelled quite a lot, and we've been to festivals, and and it's and it's definitely coming home, and and London, arriving here at London Film Festival is pretty brilliant. And when you first uh, read the no novel, did you instantly think this is the film I want to make? Absolutely. Um, my producer um, handed me a copy and said that he'd read it when he was a teenager and it kind of left his kind of big, big impression on him. And sure enough, when I read it too, I was just like, oh God, yeah, we've got to make this. Of course, the, the lead role is your, your own mother, Charlotte Rampling. Yeah. That must have been quite an interesting experience to, to have her on, on set. Yeah, to say the least. Um, I mean, for once, I could kind of tell her what to do. Um, it was kind of, it's kind of a refreshing role reversal after years of uh, subjugation. So, um, so yeah, I got I got to uh, boss her around a bit. Was it quite difficult though to find that kind of line of professionalism when it's your own your own mum? Um, I guess so. Um, yeah, um, I, we did make. I guess the only concession we made was that um, I think I felt it was if it, it was probably a bit more professional sounding if I called her Charlotte and so I stopped calling her mum all the way through but everyone kept coming up going what are you going to do you know the scene about with you and your mother and I was like look refer to her as Charlotte but uh, no apart from that it's fine of course, she, she's brilliant in the film, but as is Gabriel Byrne, you must have been so thrilled to get him on board. Uh, I, I wrote the film for the two of them, and uh, I wrote with Gabriel in mind, and I wrote with, with Charlotte in mind, and, and I couldn't I couldn't even perceive of doing it with anyone else. So it took a while. Um, it took us took us about a year to get to get Gabriel um, to, to sign up for it finally. But no, I was absolutely delighted with with working with him and her. And the film is a sort of, sort of modern film noir, so to speak. Uh, have you got any sort of big influences or films that you sort of like, filmmakers that inspired you? Yeah, I mean, uh, most of my most of my influences and references are um, uh, French French noir from the seventies and eighties. I'm thinking of Max et les Ferrailleurs with Michel Piccoli and Romy Schneider and Le Choix des Armes with Catherine Deneuve and Yves Montand and Gérard Depardieu um, and of course Melville you know with uh, Le Cercle Rouge and Le Samouraï so those are really very much um, anchored in that that kind of European cinema of the late 70s. Of course uh, the film is set in, in London of course does that film um, pose any challenges? I think a few, few filmmakers seem to have issues sometimes filming in London but how, how was that experience for you? Uh, well, the novel is set in in America and in New York, and I felt I felt that I kind of I'd been I'd we'd been there before, and I'd seen I'd seen this world um, explored kind of very well in in New York, and so the idea was to bring it over and and give it a fresh take in in London, and um, I I wanted to show a, a side of London that's that's not necessarily represented in 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 cinema, so it was just my my areas of London that that I kind of. Um, respond to. And I found that the camera work quite intriguing. It had an almost sort of voyeuristic feel to it. Can you tell us the sort of thinking behind that? Well, noir is about is 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 about the male gaze, and it's about it's about men looking looking at women and and women being objectified. And so, it's it, it by its very nature, noir is voyeuristic. So so it's very much about watching. And there's a brilliant uh, Richard Hawley score uh, as well, so, uh, prov provided in the film. Can you mm. tell us? Uh, how you sort of got in touch with him and how sort of his uh, I I sent um, we we were working on on a on an electronic score and um, and it felt that there was as much as it was fulfilling um, a side of the characters it, there was a, it there was a voice that was missing and the voice was of the, of this relationship between Anna and Bernie played by Charlotte and Gabriel and um, I heard this song and um, uh, Precious Sight from Richard Hawley and I, I and then tried tried some of his his songs of the film and thought they worked kind of very well and so I sent him the film and and he'd had a very similar experience a personal experience with his mother meeting somebody quite um, unsavory in a singles party and so he had a very strong connection to it and so that's how we we came about. And uh, your, your career uh, up to now has been predominantly in, in, well, in television, mm. but now you've made a film, is this where you see your future? Is this, are you going to sort of stick around now? Um, I hope so. Um, uh, I mean, film is, is, 
is a different environment and 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 certainly has has a different um, uh, it's a different kind of form of expression for me and and I'd I'd like to do some television too but but certainly I'm focusing on films at the moment. So just finally, have you got any um, ideas at the moment? You're working on a, on a second feature, or are you just sort of. The word uh, yeah, no, I have a few. I have uh, I have a complete a complete kind of change of direction, which is a, a, a road movie um, uh, across Europe um, and a comedy set in Australia. So, and also a revenge thriller. So, I'm working on three things at the time um, at the moment. Thank you so much for your time here today. That's brilliant. Thanks very much. Cheers.